I've been to Africa. I've been to maybe like 15 African countries, but I've been to Egypt a lot. But I never got the chance to go to Sudan because it's a little bit more difficult to get into Sudan. So a, a lot, to- what, a, a so lot difficult, that, very difficult. Right. If you could talk about that a little bit, uh, your process of entering Sudan. Well, <laughs> damn. Um, it's been some time since I've been there. The first time I went was back in 2003. In fact, shucks, this shirt I have on, Nubia. Let me come over here. This way. Oh, wow. This, this is the statues of the, the Kushite kings of the 25th Dynasty era that were buried, and they were recently uncovered. And it's now wow. inside the Khartoum Museum. This shirt we've uh, made... Uh, was in commemoration of the film, the first film I've done, which is called Nubia, The Untold Story. That film we did back in 2006, you know, uh, right after, the re- not right after, but a f- maybe a year or so after I returned from my second trip in, in the Sudan. Um, to make this, you know, long story short, uh, one of my friends, close associates and colleagues in Egypt, he's actually a Sudanese Nubian. And... We would just go all around Kemet, different places. And I, one day we just got to talk and I was like, yo, damn, I would love to see the pyramids in the Sudan. He was like, I grew up there. He was like, let's, let's go. I was like, well, let's go. So we, um, I came back to, to, you know, to the New York and my first stop was the Sudanese embassy. Uh, used to be off of second, second Avenue and 42nd street. So I went up there and I asked him, for a visa, they laughed at me. <laughs> we don't give visas to Americans, particularly like by you know single Americans. So they said, fill out an application anyway, and this is what you need to do. You need to get a sponsor, just that in the third, go back and forth. So for about a year or so, I was like up there maybe once a week, checking on the status and just back and forth, trying different things, you know. And it got to a point where they started to know me personally. You know, so they was like, yo, they sponsored me. They was like, all right, you cool. You know, you're not like, you know, some alphabet guy. You cool. Just, you know, you can, we'll, you know, we'll take you. You know, it's not take me, but um, we'll, we'll vouch for you, you know. And once I got cool with the people in the embassy, it was like, you know, the second one wasn't really that much of a problem. And that's when I brought Dr. Leonard Jeffries with me. You know, but it, it goes to show you just how important relationships are, you know, and I hate to skip, but one of the things in, in making this, the last film, you know, happy or the, the most latest film I say, rather is, is happy is, um, happy showed me again, the value of, of relationships, um, in that we have tremendous resources. You know, a lot of times we may not know how to effectively engage them. Happy also told me I may not be rich at this moment, but I'm extremely wealthy and my wealth comes from my my resources. Everything we've done in, that, in these films, uh, Nubia, the second film is the Tekken, Happy has all been done through resources. And your resource, your most important commodity is the relationships you have with other people. You know, so we need to learn the value of, of just just people. You know, everyone is important. Don't devalue anyone in your life. Everyone's important because life has a funny way of working. Today, a person's here. Tomorrow, they're there. And, you know, you value those relationships at all points of a person's life. People don't forget that, you know. So and I'm not saying we should go forward and try to look at life as people as human commodity, but it's important to understand that these people are the part of God having a human experience and you should value everybody you meet, you know? And I, that also goes to counteracting the system of white oppression that we've been in, in terms of us hating black. If we value black people as we value it, well, I guess the, the main part of it comes in love yourself. You know what I mean? Because ultimately, 
they look at themselves in the mirror and they hate themselves. And that's why they hate everything that looks like them. But when you love yourself and you love other people, you learn how to value people. And those relationships, they grow and they, they strengthen as they grow. And, you know, it, it just, things happen, you know? And they say all the time, it's not about what you know, it's about who you know. You know what I'm saying? But you can know people, but if you don't have a good relationship with that person, it don't matter. You know what I'm saying? You got to know people and have a good relationship with them to be, you know, effective. And, and, I, and that's the important thing, you know, knowing people and having a good relationship. It's not like, I know, yeah, I know, dude. Yeah, you know him, but what's your relationship to him? What's your connection to them? What's your, next, what's your relationship between with her? What's your connection with her? You know, and, you know, knowing good, healthy relationships is, is you know, our key. Particularly, you know, um, as Black people, we need to learn how to work and collude with one another in an effective way. Oh, yeah, most definitely, man. You touched on a lot of key points. I mean, building those relationships with other brothers and sisters is very, very important. I mean, even like now we got the Internet, so a lot of people spend a lot of time wasted when they could be reaching out to brothers in Africa, New York, Baltimore, D.C., California, Brazil, you know, and and connecting with like-minded people. And we can consolidate our strength. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and that's, listen, Pan-African unity is really, I'm not going to say the solution, but for our liberation, it's probably one of the most important solutions. If you think about it, division and tribalism is kind of like what got us in the situation we're in now, you know, and I'm just going to say it this way. Our, there were people, you know, our enemies, there were people who exploited that, you know, who used the fact that these two tribes may not get along to foster their agenda, you know, to line their pockets. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's how, you know, a lot of us ended up here. You know what I'm saying? So we, we have to learn how to deal past that and be more unified. Yeah, most definitely. Um, I and I'm, I'm South sorry. Africa. Oh, no, you go ahead. You got it. Uh, so even, you know, today, you know, we talk about tribalism, shit like that. I mean, for us, it looks a little different here, but it, it's colors, you know, red, blue. I'm from here. I'm from there. I'm from this. I'm repping this. I'm from, you know, it, it's the same shit. And there are people exploiting that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm not really sure. You know what I mean? I know. I know. Well, I'm not, I was about to say I'm not really sure what it's going to take. What it takes again is African unity. <laughs>